If you're considering adding electrical accessories to your tractor, like I have, such as ROPS mounted LED lights, a uh, ROPS mounted fan, or an electrical outlet, then you're going to find you'll run out of the power capacity of the uh, work light connection that I covered in the previous video when I just had my ROPS light connected. So in order to get past that limitation, I added a fuse box to my tractor. And that's what this video is going to be about today. So the challenge is finding a place to mount an extra fuse box on a tractor. This is where the factory fuse box is, and this is where I mounted my extra fuse box. I wanted my extra fuse box to be close to the factory fuse box here. So, but there really is no good place to mount one, so I had to basically make a place to mount it, which was to suspend a small mounting plate here that I fashioned uh, off of this structural plate here. Let's start with a diagram of how I wired the fuse box, and then I'll get into the specifics of the hardware and installation. Like with my video on the ROPS mounted LED lights, it begins with the work light connection. If your tractor has one, it's usually located under the left or right fender. On the Kubota L-Series tractors, it's located under the left rear fender. This connection is hot only when the ignition key is on or the tractor is running. Back to the diagram, when the work light connection is hot, the 60 amp relay is energized and allows power to flow from the battery to the fuse box. So why is the 60 amp relay being fed by a 30 amp fuse? Well first it's because those parts are what came with the harness kit I mentioned in the ROPS LED video. However, in my opinion, oversizing the relay will ensure a long life for the relay contacts. I did not use the wiring harness as is, but instead I cut up the cabling and used the pieces for my design. You'll find a materials list on the companion page to this video at the DIY My Way website. There is a link to that page in the video description. By the way, the harness wiring uses 14 gauge wire. If you think your accessories will exceed the 30 amps of the inline fuse, you should use a heavier gauge wire for the harness from the battery to the relay and fuse box. Now about that fuse box, the one I chose is a six-way blade fuse box from Amazon. It has a 100 amp total capacity and a 30 amp max per circuit. A clear plastic cover protects the fuses from evil. It has a number 1032 stud for connecting power and blown fuse indicators for each circuit, which is convenient for figuring out which fuse is blown. Starting from the battery, the wiring harness black wire connects to the negative post with an eyelet connector. Likewise, the red wire connects to the battery's positive post. Notice the inline fuse holder is on the positive wire. This is where the 30 amp fuse goes. Wires are protected in 3 8 inch wire loom as they leave the battery compartment on their way to the fuse box. I keep the harness and wire loom as far away from hot surfaces as possible, tie wrapping it to existing wire loom when possible. The harness and wire loom arrive safely at the location where the fuse box will be. I needed a place I could mount the fuse box and relay near the factory fuse box and this metal plate seemed like the best spot, but it is a little tricky and you'll see why shortly. I mounted the fuse box and relay on a metal plate that I made from a three inch by seven inch Simpson tie plate, which is normally used in construction to tie lumber together. I measured the angle on the plate on the tractor so that I can bend the first inch of the tie plate to the correct angle. I also bent one inch of the other end 90 degrees. Then I primed it and painted it gloss black. Oh, and I also clipped and filed this corner to get rid of the sharp edge. The relay is mounted to the top plate with a 1 inch number 10 by 32 stainless steel screw, lock washer, and nut using one of the existing holes in the plate. This screw also serves as the common connection point for the negative wires. The fuse box is mounted near the bottom of the plate with two 1 inch 8 by 32 stainless steel screws, lock washers, and nuts using two of the existing holes in the plate. I got very lucky that the spacing of the holes in the fuse box matched those of the plate. Here I'm doing a test fit before I painted the plate. I also mark the holes where it will attach to the tractor. Now comes the tricky part I mentioned. This plate I'm about to mount to the fuse box happens to be right below the fuel tank. A plastic fuel tank at that. 
I'm about to drill holes in that plate and it's been my experience that fuel tanks do not like to be drilled into, so I have to make sure that that doesn't happen. First I need to get the factory fuse box out of the way by removing the two bolts that attach it to the frame. Then I place a piece of steel flat bar between the mounting plate and the fuel tank to protect the fuel tank when I'm drilling. I use a number 29 drill bit so I can tap the holes for a number 8 by 32 screw. Just between you and me, you could use an eighth inch drill bit in a pinch. After tapping the first hole and attaching the fuse box plate to the first hole with a screw and lock washer, I drill the second hole. Notice that I have removed the relay temporarily to mount the plate. Then I tap the second hole. Here's the fuse box plate mounted with the relay installed. Now it's time to wire it all up. First I peel back the wire loom of the factory fuse box to locate the work light wire leaving the fuse box. In the case of my tractor, it is this yellow wire here. Your tractor's work light color may be different, so make sure you have the right wire. You can verify it by noticing where the work light fuse is in the fuse box and look for the wire directly to the back of it. Now take a deep breath and cut the work light wire two or three inches back from the fuse box. Then tuck the rest of the fuse box wires back into the wire loom leaving the work light wire out. I removed the inline 30 amp fuse from the battery wiring harness, then cut the excess wire and loom from the harness, leaving enough to comfortably wire things up. Next, I stripped the ends of the wires and crimped on inline wire connectors, putting the female connector on the positive connector and the male connector on the black wire. I always put female connectors on positive wires from the battery to reduce the chance of a short between the wire and the tractor chassis, which is negative. Then I strip the wires on the relay plug going to the relay and crimped a male connector to one of the red relay contact wires and a female connector onto the black wire. After that I connected red to red and black to black. If this isn't clear, don't worry, I'll show more detail about it shortly. Next I crimped a female connector onto the work light wire coming from the factory fuse box and crimped a male connector onto the wire going to the one side of the relay coil. This wire happens to be blue in the harness I used but it could be a different color for the different brands of harness. Just pay attention to the diagram on the relay and the color of the wires coming from the relay plug. Okay, as promised, here's more detail that should clear things up. Here are the wires coming from the battery. The red positive wire connects to one side of the relay contact through the relay plug. The black negative wire connects to the relay coil through the relay plug, and a second black wire from that same plug terminal connects to the common negative terminal using a crimp-on ring terminal. Here are these connections represented on a wiring diagram. The other red wire for the other side of the relay contact connects to the fuse box power connection lug using a crimp-on ring terminal. Here's this connection represented on a wiring diagram. The wires connecting the work light fuse output to the relay coil are here. And here's this connection represented on a wiring diagram. The front and side light circuits are fused at 10 amps. The rear lights are fused at 5 amps, and the power outlet is fused at 15 amps, which is what it is rated for. All of the wires connect to the fuse box with insulated crimp-on female spade terminals. Here are the circuits represented on the wiring diagram. The circuit leaves the fuse box in 3 8 inch wire loom and heads toward the back of the tractor, attached to an existing wire loom with UV-resistant tie wraps. The wires arrive at my light switch box from which they branch off to lights and to the power outlet. The details of the light wiring are covered in my ROPS LED lights video, so I'll just cover the power outlet. The outlet is mounted just below the switch box using two number 6x32 screws, lock washers, and nuts. I made the mounting plate for the outlet from the metal cover plate from a small electronics enclosure I had lying around. Make sure you get the polarity correct when connecting the wiring to the outlet. So I hope you found this video useful, particularly if you're going to be adding electrical accessories to your tractor. An additional fuse box gives you a lot more options than you'll find just trying to tap the power off of the work light connection on the uh, back fender. So hey, if you enjoyed this video, please take a time to click a like, give me a comment, and consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.